I like to start telling you about my parents' dream for me when I was a child. Their biggest dream for me was to one day become a factory worker. <laughs> Today, standing in front of you as a vice chairwoman, global human capital leader for PwC, one of the largest professional service firms in the world, and the first woman from China to undertake this role. I was born and grown up in China during a very different time. My journey from then to now has not been an easy one. It's filled with challenges, roadblocks, and hardship. But it also has been incredibly rewarding and fulfilling and humbling. Throughout the different chapter of my life, three important lessons stand out for me. As a shy girl from China and a young adult arriving in the US, I discovered the power of raising the bar and the never settle for less. And the second, as a working mother returning to China, I found the significance of defining my personal success. And the third, as a female leader, I learned by investing in myself, I came into a position to helping people around me and empower them. Let me start with my first lesson. This is my family's picture taken many years ago in Shanghai. My parents and my two sisters, Kate and Adina. I am the middle daughter, so middle one is me. As we grown up, one thing was consistent for the three of us. Our parents' biggest dream was for us to get a job from the local factory in Shanghai. My parents' dream was very normal in those days. Life was tough. Little things were considered to be luxury for millions of families like ours. For example, this baby picture is actually not me. It is my older sister, Kate. When I ask my mother why she never take any baby pictures of me, she said, oh, there's no need. You and your sister look very much alike. <laughs> I remember my sister and I always felt hungry when we were little. Like most family in those times, my family was living in government-allocated food voucher, which were very limited. Before every Chinese New Year, my mother would wake me and my older sister Kate up at 3 o'clock in the morning, where we would go to the local market and standing in the long line and hoping to get some eggs and chickens. If we were not there early enough, we might not get any nice food for our holiday. Food was never enough to go around. During my childhood, education was not encouraged the way it is today. China was very close to society to the outside of the world. Majority of my elementary school education was mostly reading and memorizing Mao's Red Book. I've learned Capitalism was evil. <laughs> American was bad. As a girl grown up to accept this as a fact, I never dreamed one day I would have landed in such a place. But at age 23, I did just that. China started to open up its door to the world at late 70s, which provide a possibility for thousands of young people like myself with a chance to go outside of the country 
to seek our own future. I've always wanted to create a better life for myself and for my family. I saw this was a lifetime opportunity to change my life. I grabbed it by a long process of finding a sponsor in the U.S. and obtaining my visa. And I got on plane for the very first time in my life from Shanghai to San Francisco and entered in New World. I still remember the first time I walked into an American supermarket. Imagine at the age of 23, seeing the sheer abundance of the food on the shelf. So much food and the color. And all those fruits I never even know existed. And you can buy it without food voucher. I could not believe my eyes. It was so different from China, where everything was rationed by the government. America was so different to what I had imagined when I was in China. Even so, I faced tremendous challenge as a foreigner in the U.S. One of the biggest ones was not able to speak the language. I could only manage about three phrases that time. Hello, how are you? Good morning. I was living in someone's basement. I had no formal education background, and I had very little money in my pocket. I was desperate to find a way or job to be able to survive in this new world. There's a Chinese saying, which means God always provides paths for people. I found the one which did not require a college degree or need a minimum language skill. I became a busker at a restaurant in Chinatown. I work at night, I study English during the day, and with a goal to get my English good enough, so I can apply for a college. My friend, who had also come from China, saw I was crazy. You barely managed to graduate from high school, Nora, they said. How could that be possible for you to graduate from the university in the U.S.? They thought it would be much practical for me to find a husband and raise a family. <laughs> but giving up study was not an option. I wanted a better life, and getting a decent education would be the first step for me to achieve my goal. So even after I got married, my daughter was born, I continued my study. It often took me three times more to study the same material as my classmates, but I was determined that I could do it. When my daughter was two years old, I graduated from the university, standing next to my husband in my caps and gowns, and holding my daughter was one of the proudest days in my life. By focusing on raising the bar and the refuse to let fate settle my life, I achieved a college degree and even land a job at one of the big eight accounting firms then. My second lesson is about figuring out what success means to me personally. So, graduate from the college, I started to work. I saw that I conquered the worst. But my challenge was just beginning. At the first day of my work, I found myself among the peers who were not only nearly a decade younger than me. They were all American. I was the first one the firm had hired who was born and grown up in China. I spoke and broke English. I felt socially awkward. I did not understand American footballs or baseballs. I had no clue about latest celebrity gossip. <laughs> and you can see, I was a total stranger. After a long day of work, 
when my co-worker would go out for a drink. I had to rush home to take care of my daughter. I worked a long hour. I tried very hard to improve my technical skills. I tried even harder to fit in socially and culturally. I also feel guilty of not able to spend more time with my daughter. I feel exhausted. There were so many times I thought about quitting. Later on, I had my son juggling between family life and work become even tougher. I remember one time I had to rush out from one of the client meetings because I got a call from the hospital. My son got himself into an accident at his friend's birthday party. I was wrecked by guilt because I was not there with him. That event made me to do a lot of soul-searching, and I asked myself, what do I really want in life? I had contemplated this question for a long time, and the answer I gave to myself was clear. I wanted both. I wanted a happy family, but also I wanted to give it my best to be successful in my career. And I believe I could do that. I know it's not easy, but that's what I want. So I continue to focus on my family and also on progressing my career. When I moved to China, my son was four years old and my daughter was nine. I became the first female manager who was born in China in Arthur Anderson Shanghai office. And this time, I found myself competing with younger managers who were speaking in a language I could not understand, even though I was back into my hometown. In those days, all the management team were mostly come from Hong Kong. They spoke to each other in Cantonese. <laughs> so often, I have to ask them to stop speaking in their own dialect so I could participate in the meeting. But I did not let that and many other challenge to stop me. Because I find out there is a tremendous value I could offer to my client as well as to the local staff by leveraging my combined experience of upbringing in China and the study and the work in the US. With determination and hard work, my career took off. I became the first female partner who was born and grown up in China in our Shanghai office. But there's never such a thing as smooth sailing. Shortly after I became partner, Anderson and the PwC combined its business. So I moved to the new firm. I had to try extra harder to reprove myself in the new firm and overcome some of the doubts people had about me. There was one point I was told there was no leadership for me in the firm, but I refused to let people to tell me who I could be. Looking back to where I started in my life and to what I am doing now, what I have never featured into my or my parents' widest dream. But here's the thing. I do not define my personal success by titles or positions that I achieve in life. I define instead by looking at the obstacles and the challenges that I've overcome along my journey. When I'm looking back and see I refuse to give up on myself where things got too hard, when I did not accept my fate as a factory girl, when I kept pushing myself onward and raising the bar, that's where I feel the greatest sense of achievement. I understand now all those challenges and obstacles 
only made me much stronger and more determined. Keep rethinking what success means to me through different stages of my life. Help me to focus on the right thing. Here is the third lesson. I do not believe in sacrificing. I believe in investing in ourselves is a good cause. I do not believe in we women always have to choose between a happy family life or a success career. We could have both if we want. It's not easy, but it's possible. I believe we should be the CEOs of our life. We determine who we want to be, where we want to go, what we want to do in our life. And we should never let guilt or self-imposed limitation to deter us from reach our potential. It's my experience when I continue to invest in myself, when I try my very best to reach my true potential. I came into a position to helping people around me and empower them. So many people helped me along my journey. It's my duty to give it forward. Find the next young female colleagues or a student from a humble background who's afraid, dream big. Coach her to the greatness. Who knows? By sharing my experience with you today, I may be able to inspire somebody to do something they saw they never do. I would consider this is a good value that I can give back. If we all strive to achieve, to reach our potential, we could collectively be a role model for millions of young females in this country and have the ability to make China a better place for all of our children. I believe a better China is good for the world, and that each of us can contribute to it by doing our part. For me, I took a pass to continue pushing my own limit, to never settle, and to keep reaching and raising the bar, because you never know where you're capable of taking yourself. Where do you want to take yourself? And what do you want to achieve in your life? My story is not finished yet. Neither is yours. Thank you for listening.